Welcome everyone to our Two Posh Podcast. I am Gabrielle and I am here with my daughter, my beautiful co-host, Marcella. Hello. And Spider. Hi, Spider. Hello. And we have a beautiful guest today, Jana Miskowski. That's right. Who just drove in all the way from Oklahoma. Uh, yes. Thank you so much for being here. Thank we you. We appreciate it. And we, um, we love Jana. Jana has been a model for our mm-hmm. Tuposh Boutique. Mm-hmm. And she modeled in the Rock of the Troops. Yes, I did Operation Rock of the Troops up the Gas Monkey. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. You walked in there for us. And then... You did the photo shoot yes. at our mansion house here. <laughs> it's <was> mine. Yeah. <laughs> and we have your great Batman picture. That's my yes. like favorite. I, I, um, probably all, all, the, all the ones I took that day. Like everybody's like, oh my gosh, I the love Batman. that. So, yeah, and it's resurfaced recently yeah. yes. on Facebook, I noticed. Yes, so it's one of my cool. favorites. That. Um, us too, and we um, are going to get doing some photo shoots again. We're actually yeah. talking about it, so... Yeah. We'll have you back for that. And then um, tell us, you guys, because Marcella and Whitley met Jana. Yes. Tell us how that was. We were out, me, Whitley, and our other model friend, Jojo, were out having a girls' night in the shops at Legacy, and we went to Sambuca, and we walked in, and we were partying, and suddenly we see this beautiful, tall, (laughs) blonde you know, very, uh, she stood yeah, out. look at her. Like, <laughs> big t- yeah, you, you need to look her. at YouTube. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Um, she stood out in a crowd, for sure. We, we were like, who is that? And we happened to be up at the VIP, like, mm-hmm. area yes. at her table. And I think Whitley started talking to you first, maybe, or th- something like something that. Something, like, um, the group I was with, they, I, you know, had the VIP area. Mm-hmm. And they're like, uh, go, you know, go find some girls to hang out with. They look fun. And yeah. we, I think you guys were like staying on my kind of right we in front were. of our area. I was like, all right, well, let's, you know. So um, for whatever yeah, reason, we like, started talking. Marcella and like Whitley and JoJo stood out to me. And, <laughs> so, and it's kind of like, you I know, know. Kind of a random. Um, That's how it has been, though. Started. It's like, yes. mm-hmm. yeah, we hit it off. And yeah. then Whitley, I think, was going to make you something. Oh, and then she did. She made me my yeah. um, mermaid. Mermaid Halloween costume. That's right. And then kept in touch. And then she came to your house and mm-hmm. yeah. it was the rest That's is just, history. Yeah. It's kind of like flowed naturally, you know, just yeah. kind of hanging out and getting to know each other. Mm-hmm. And so now so. we don't spend enough time with you. No. That's for sure. She lives because too far she away. She lives too far hopefully away. not for, you know, hopefully I can migrate down this way. Sure. Oh, is that what you want to do? I think so. Yes. Really? When my daughter graduates. Yes. I definitely Move to will. Dallas? Potentially, oh, yeah. That'd it's be like, cool. It's on the list. Good. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yes. Well, uh, everyone wants to get to know you better. Okay. So mm-hmm. we want to know a little bit, like give us a short synopsis of your, how you grew up, where you're from. Okay. Well, um, my name is Jana Moskovsky. I was born in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and lived there until I was about eight or nine years old. And then we moved to Lake Eufaula, which is about two hours east of Oklahoma City. And then I've grown up on the lake there since 85 and graduated high school in 1995 and then um, went to college and then um, got married, had a baby, got divorced, (laughs) (laughs) moved back to Oklahoma City and then back to the lake. And so I've been there ever since and um, that's where I currently live now along and I now have a five-year-old son and an 18-year-old daughter. So tell us a little bit. when you got married, how old were you? Um, <clears throat> I was, was a 99, so I was like 22, I think. So young. Yes. Um, too young. <laughs> how long were you dating? Uh, we dated for about four years. Oh, then, a long time. Mm-hmm, married four years and then divorced after that. It Was it like just live, I mean, grown apart or was there any um, drama? Like- not really any drama, I would say. It was um, my ex-husband, my daughter's dad is 10 or 11 years old, older than I am so I mean I was 18 so, and soon turned 19 after that and he was 29 when we started dating that was in the 90s right, <laughs> right. if my 18 year old daughter was dating a 29 year old right now I don't think I would be okay with that but, oh. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> but anyways well, um no we I, and we were we had a really good friendship or in relationship and we're still have kept in touch and communicate um pretty well for the most part and I'm still um 
get along with his family well, and we still oh, do great. holidays and stuff together. So. Oh, that's that's the best thing yes. for the kids. Mm-hmm. Oh, what, yeah. What about the dad to your son? Um, I have not spoken to him in, I don't know, three or four years. And my son just turned five. Does he have no relationship with No, he does not. On his, I mean. It's all all on him. (laughs) Yeah. Does he pay child support? No, he does not. Okay. Yeah. But my daughter's dad always has. I mean, I can't complain as far as, you know, there's never been any conflict or anything like that. And we divorced whenever she was three, three years old, and she's 18 now. Wow. Mm Mm-hmm. So what but about I was, I I was mean, never or my son's dad and I um we were never married but we were together um 7 years. Wow. Yes. Wow, long um time. so maybe a little closer to 8 but we'll call it 7. Lucky number 7. Yeah. <laughs> a 7 year year but anyways um we just um not really sure kind of grew apart um he kind of went off of a different path that I didn't agree with. Um, hang out with a different crowd per se and um, how does he get away with not paying child support though that's a good question if he, if we could find him oh you don't know where no, he is no he has disappeared basically yeah, basically yes I mean he's still around um, where I live he's actually graduated from Frisco high school when there was only one high school in Frisco oh, wow. <laughs> believe it or not um, I think there's like close okay. to 10 now or something mm-hmm. like, something right, ridiculous no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um but yeah he's his both of his parents passed away and my son's grandparents my um his dad's parents passed away um his mom was 47 and his dad was 51 oh and, my gosh um anyway then after my son's dad and i broke up i think he kind of just it was very too overwhelming and didn't get the help that he needed um, mm. I still support. I would still support him, mm-hmm. and you know, and getting help if he want, you know, if he chose to do that. But um, there would be probably have to be some pretty drastic changes for me to allow him to, you know, have be around our son. Yes, I mean, I'm not opposed to it by any means, but um, there's some certain like standards and guidelines I have as as a parent, right? You know, for my child's safety as well. Yeah. So is he an addict? Um. I would say he is now. When we were together, I never. No. I mean, he has he has a bachelor's degree from Southeastern State in Durant, Oklahoma. I mean, he's very smart, intelligent. Had a you know hundred thousand dollar a year job when we were together. Um, and then just kind of slowly started to downslide. Downslide. So, mm-hmm. but I mean, if he chooses to get the help, then I'm I would support him, and because I want my son to have a dad, a dad, but I don't want him to have a in, you know, right. a some time, a part time dad, I guess. Right. Yeah. So we went to put it, and so. Are you dating yeah. anyone now? Um, I am not. Well, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yes or no? Um, the guy that I'm dating lives in Long Beach, California. Oh, that's why you're so, just there. Yes. Okay. How did you meet? That's a good question. <laughs> um, his name is Bob. He and I met. Um, online through a, like a date through I think it was Tinder or somewhere. It's, he's the only guy that I've ever gone on a date with from a dating app because of this trust thing I have because of my previous relationship where um, when I was kidnapped by in between so in between when my son and dad and I breaking up. Wait, tell us, go back, yeah, and yeah, the, yeah, back tell us like, like in more detail. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I started dating. Um, this guy from, uh, see, he lives west of Oklahoma City, I'll say that, mm-hmm. um, he's a business owner, um, he's a couple of years older than I am, I think, or right, like around, around the same age. How did you meet him? Um, we had some mutual friends, like on Facebook or some, um, something, or some, it wasn't on a dating app or anything, no one introduced us, we just had some mutual friends and started chatting, um, that way and just kind of. Hit it, you know, hit it off, and um, that's actually who I was with the night that I met Marcella. Really? Yes. <laughs> I vaguely remember, but I remember <laughs> but you. But that was like, yeah. I mean, that was probably older, right? Did you say he was older? Um, he. I think he's a couple years older. Than oh, not I like mean, older, older. No, no, no. Okay. I mean, we were. I mean, about the same age. Yeah. Anyway, but that was two thousand 
that was 16, yeah. 15 or 16 yeah. or something like probably 16. So it was after my son's dad and I had um, broken up. But um, so we started hanging out. We were um, came down to Dallas a lot and shops like I say area. We went to Vegas. You know, was, I, I can look back now and see all these flags, you know, going everywhere. But, you know, it's just trying to like schmooze me over, I guess. Or right. like, like what flags were you seeing? What do you mean? Well, like trying to like overly imp- impress me, which, you know, it's, um, it's kind of one way I guess I look at it, but just, um, his behavior and so like, so a couple months go by and there, I didn't have any reason to question of like, was he married? Like, was he married or divorced, getting divorced? Cause I said, you know, I said, well, what's your relationship status? You know? He's like, well, I'm getting getting divorced, and I said, okay, so. So he me, was still married, but going through a divorce. Well, that's what I told you. Yes. Okay. So, and I'm also a paralegal, so I'm getting doing my you know background searches, <laughs> <laughs> um, just to you know because I have children and I'm trying to be aware of the people that I'm around. Um, there wasn't anything that made me think otherwise, to like not for me to not believe what he told what you. he what he told me. Um, we even went to his house over spring break and stayed the full week. Me and my daughter and two of her friends, um, I guess while his wife and their two children were off snow skiing. Um, but, I mean, I even looked at the house. There were no women's clothes. There were no family pictures. I mean, nothing. Well, then the month after that, it was in April, I found out, oh, no, he was, in fact, married, never filed for divorce that, you know, they were how did you find out well our mutual friends found out that we're you know that we're i guess he was telling people we were dating which i mean we're we we're seclusive but i wasn't like because since he, he lived two and a half hours away it wasn't like we saw, saw each other all the time but we were together just, just about every weekend and i can't remember who it was but somebody came up to me and said you know he's married right i was like no i was like he said he's getting divorced blah blah, blah. and they're like no they Still live together and filled me in so if, of course right then i was like nope you know done uh, you know this is not not anybody i want to date so after that um i was doing this boat racing circuit um for a while and then i was gone one weekend that is in july of 16 and um my daughter was working at the marina the lake we work or live on and he was harassing her, trying to find out where I was and everything. I said, just don't talk to him. Just do your job. You know, I'll take care of it when I get home. And because he was trying to, you know, give give her money to, f- to find out where I was. I said, just take the money and I'll <laughs> take it back to him. So when I did that so, but, afternoon. Um, when you found out that he's still married and they mm-hmm. live together, you just cut him off and didn't speak to him anymore. Is yes. that why he's trying to find you? Yes, because he wasn't getting the reaction out of me that. You know, he was trying to say, oh, I'm sorry. It's a misunderstanding. I said, you know, there's not really a misunderstanding on my end now. Um, you know, you can try to convince yourself. You How know. did he get rid of all the clothes and the pictures? And stuff? I, my daughter and I still talk about that. <laughs> I know someone that did that all the time. <laughs> but I thought he had two separate houses. No, there was one house that they would all go together. Oh, and the oh, and assistant would, right. would yeah. switch Clean pictures. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, oh, that's right. So maybe something like that. Mm-hmm. Or I mean, like now looking back now, like I wouldn't even put anything past yeah. him to like. There's, I mean, literally, there's like no telling. I mean, what he would, what, what like length. So yes, so he goes know. to your daughter. You said take the money out, give it back to him. Yes. So when I got back that evening, it was a Sunday evening. It was like five five thirty, um, because he has a his family has a lake place on you know a couple miles from where I live, and he was out in his boat and I said you know I'm back meet me down at your you know your boat dock and I'm, I'm going to give you this money back I said just leave us alone and we'll just call it that so when I went to hand him his money back he grabbed my arm and pulled me into his boat and then you know he ran back around and put the boat in reverse and took off across the lake and my car's running with up you in it yes with me in it <laughs> and what my, were you doing well I start, I, this at this time, I was just trying to stand up because when he took, you know, put it in reverse and cause he just, uh-huh. he just like, you know, yanked me in. I was just trying to figure out like what, you know, what kind of went into defensive, yeah, defensive mode. Um, like how am I going to get out of this situation? 
And thankfully, I've grown up around water my entire life. I was a lifeguard for four years and even two years in college. And so I knew I, I could swim if I could get we were there was a no wake zone coming up. So I knew he had to slow down at some point. So and I had not been drinking at all. We've been racing boats all day um, on another lake. Anyway, um, he had clearly, you know, clearly been drinking. So whenever we, we got to the no wake zone, did he say anything to you? I mean, you and the boat. Well, he was like, "Just wait to see where I'm going to take you now." And you know, of course, he was being all nice and everything up until oh, nice up until the point that he pulled me into the boat. You know, I just thought it was going to be like a here. You know, we're done. Don't you know? Just leave us alone. My daughter was 15 at the time. She was going to turn 16 um, like a week, like the next week. So anyway, we got to the no wake zone. I was like, can I get you another beer or something? Because the ice chest was behind his seat. And in my so mind. So you were playing friendly. Yes. Because in my mind, I knew because he's in a, you know, the driver, captain seat, driver's seat. And the ice chest was behind his seat that if I acted like I was going to get him a drink, that I would just bail out of the boat. I didn't have a swimsuit. I had my cl- all had my clothes on, and I left my phone in my car. Thank goodness it was running this whole time, um, and I had it locked. But uh, the only thing I had on me, I think, was like my sunglasses, and then like just regular like some like cut off shorts and a tank top or something. So I jumped out of the boat and started swimming to the shore. And what did you do? Well, I held my breath as long as I could. I was like swam underwater, like as long as I could or as far as I could. And when I came up, you know, it's like, what are you doing? You know, couldn't believe that I jumped out of the boat and acting like I was being belligerent and crazy. And I looked to the south and I saw a lake patrol boat coming around the corner. So then I knew like, okay, I, I could calm down a little bit because, I mean, he didn't see me jump out of the boat, but I knew that he would, that we were in the no wake zone and that lake patrol would be coming up on us soon so I swam back to the boat and then um got back in and and then Kenny took me to the (laughs) um marina and that lake patrol I mean that's just where they park their boats for the evening or store their boats and so there he was kind of trapped then um because he had nowhere else to go because the lake patrol was he threatening to you or what um yeah I could just like you you can see it in somebody's eyes then they're Mm -hmm. like just you know just wait till you see where I'm going to take you, and I was like, this, this, I've never seen him like this rage or like you know this build up in somebody's eyes, and they're just the way that they're. Why though? Why is he mad at you? Because I was not, um, I guess, conforming to what he wanted. I, kind of, even though that he now he's married and he has yes, children. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and okay. a, and a business owner, and um, so anyway. I got back to, or went back to get my car because my car was still over at his like place and he had his truck parked horizontal across the driveway where I couldn't get out. Um, I How went, did he do that? I'm confused. Well, because I went back by boat because once he, once I got to the marina, I had some other friends of mine that were, that had pulled up at the same time. I think that I look back and think like, God knew this was, you know, all this kind of, kind of, going to kind of come together the lake patrol was coming one way and I had a boat full of friends coming the other way and I was had just gotten back into town I mean it wasn't maybe 20 minutes I'd been home before all this happened so he blocked you in after you had jumped off and swam so, yeah and so after I got back I jumped out of the boat got back in and then so you actually went back in the boat yes because the lake, lake patrol was behind me so I knew that if he wasn't there's was only like one way he could go and that lake patrol is behind us. So if I had to, you know, I would like wave my arms or get the lake patrol's was attention. Was the water deep? I'm trying to figure it out where um, you are at this point. Did you have to get back in the boat? He, yes, because where I jumped, where I jumped out, there was um, we call it rip raft, but it's just a bunch of rocks that lead up because we're un- we were going under a bridge under the main highway, and it's the main part of the lake. So, I mean, I could have. If I had to have, if that lake patrol wouldn't have been behind us and I wouldn't have seen it, I probably would have swam all the way to the shore and walked up to the highway from there. But since the lake patrol was behind me, I felt some sense of safety knowing that if, you know, something were to happen, then I could get the lake patrol's attention. 
So anyway, from there, he he would not take me back to my car. Once I got back in the boat, he would only take me to the marina because there were a lot of people there. It's a Sunday, you know, afternoon. It's busy time. It's July. It's a busy time in the lake. And um, when we pull up, he just starts saying she's because I was soaking wet and, you know, saying, oh, she's belligerent. She's drunk. Well, I going crazy. Like, you know, she's lost her mind, all this stuff. And um, I'm like, I don't know what he's talking about. So I, I get out and I get. I had some other friends there, and they, of course, knew that I hadn't been drinking or anything, and they knew um, the situation. The situation. So I went, got in with another friend of mine. They took me back to get my car, and by that time, um, the person I was in the boat with had sped out of there because he knew that he was fixing to be in trouble. Because um, as soon as the late patrol pulled up, I could have, you know, said, "Hey, you know, this is what happened," but. So he raced to his house and then parked his truck behind your running car. Yes, he went in and, you know, put his, took a shower, put his polo t-shirt on, you know, fixed his hair, um, all this stuff, like trying to, I guess, make him look innocent or like. But he boxed your car in. Yes. Well, my car's still running this whole time. Luckily, I locked it before I got, I don't know what, you know, made me think to do that, but um, then he wouldn't move his truck. So I had to call a um, highway patrolman friend of mine to come over and ask him to move his truck, and he would not move his truck. And then we had to call a county deputy to come out, and he still would not move his truck. I was like, I just want to go home. I'm not trying to, you know, I just want this to be over. Anyways, and he said, well, I'm not moving my truck unless you give her a ticket for something. And they're like, well, she hasn't done anything. anything. He said, well, she, you know, trying to say I'm drunk and all this. I said, where's well, the wife at this point and the kids? You don't know. <laughs> I still have never, you know, seen her. Right. Um, anyway, so I, um, like, will you take a breathalyzer? Yes. Okay, I did it. I took the breathalyzer, 0. 0.00. And you have to wait, like, 10, 15 minutes. Then same, you know, same results. They went back in, said, they're, you know, she's nothing, you know, she's not drunk. She hasn't been drinking. Anyway, so they arrested him for refusing to move his truck. You can't get you arrested, arrested for that? that? Oh, I don't <laughs> have either. Well. Um, or got not doing what you're told? Uh, think? that and then also since he pulled like grabbed me and pulled me in the boat um they charged him with um domestic domestic assault and battery and kidnapping um taking me against my will but to and, so and you told them like when he wouldn't move the truck you were like he actually pulled me in a boat he took me against my will and what did yes. he say no i didn't do that right yes but they believed you oh yeah yeah mm-hmm. because i mean like they, they clearly i mean and i like this trooper, state trooper that um, I called is, I've known for a long time, um, actually lives in the same adi- neighborhood addition that I do, but at the opposite end. We're not, I wouldn't say that we're like close friends or anything, but we know who each other are just, just from, you know, living in the same area um, and passing each other on the highway frequently. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and then, I mean, they didn't have any reason not to believe me or for my I guess my story to be um, discredited because my daughter was telling the same story separately um, of how he was harassing her, trying to find out where mm-hmm. I was before I got there and everything. So, so after that, mm-hmm. what ha- have you ever seen him again? Have you ever heard from him? Do you know anything? Um, I filed a protective order, which was granted. Um, the county filed you know, the charges on him. And I think I did the protective order since he lived on the other, on west of Oklahoma City. Um, was for 60 days or three, um, 60 or 90 days. Anyway, I have not, I may actually, I take that back. I had seen him once or twice, like at the lake because, you know, it's like on big weekends or something. Um, and he will try to contact me here and there, but I've not nothing to, um, make me think he's going to like, you know, come over. And you never heard from the wife or anything like. No, uh, nothing. So it no. just kind of ended. Does she that? know about you? Um, yes. And so now that is why you're yeah. super cautious when you go on date. <laughs> <laughs> yes. After that, I did not date until just recently. Really? Yes. So now this guy is the first guy you are dating from an app. You met him on Tinder yes. and he mm-hmm. lives in California. Yes. He's from Pennsylvania, but he lives in Long Beach now. And he just turned 40. He's got two. Two kids and he is divorced. 
<laughs> and how's that going? Good. <laughs> yes, it's going. When right. did you meet him? Oh, we actually met um, in May of 2017 in Oklahoma City. Wait, that's already almost no. two years. Yes. Well, uh, so I met him then. That was the first date we went on. And why? I don't even know like what. Because generally, like I'm on a dating app, I'm like, Psh, like you know, whatever, whatever. Um, and I so I agreed to go on a date with him. And I've never like I was real leery. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to. We're going to like only public place like that I felt comfortable in or in around. And anyway, um, so we went on our date that night, which was good. And we just kind of kept in touch here and there. Maybe I don't know. We might chat, might, may have like talked like every two or three months, something over the time period until we went on our second date just this January, like January 2nd or 3rd. And it was like exactly 600 days from our first date, first date to our second date. Oh, wow. And I, cause I was just like, I was just curious of how, you know, how long it's been because I couldn't remember. So I got on the Google, like on those Google calendars and calculated the days and it said 600 days exactly. I was like, hang on a second. So I, Closed all that out, and I, you know, did it again because it's just kind of odd. That's 600 days exactly. Anyway, so we went on a date um, just this January of 19, and then I went out to California last week for five days, I think. And that was good? Was, yes. You, was, you like him great. a lot? Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Yeah. That's good. So I can, yeah. Can when I do you see him again? Uh, March. <laughs> March. Oh, is he coming here? Um, I'm going to go back out there um, in the middle of March, and then um, he travels. He does medical sales, so he travels a lot. And if he's coming through, like, Dallas or Tulsa or Oklahoma City or something, then, you know. You can meet up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's cool. So so tell us a little bit about um, the your love of the lake and the boats uh, and the fish and the fish, all that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about the fish. <laughs> Do you fish I every day? I love to fish. Yes, I fish. Every, yeah, I would say I fish every day. Really? Yes. Uh, like, I don't care if it's midnight or, you know, cold, What do you do 30, with the fish? I uh, mainly just throw them back. I mean, I don't like so to clean them. So it's a them. hobby? Yes. <laughs> I mean, unless I'm, somebody, like, I'll, if somebody says they want to clean them or, you know, wants them, then I'll put them in a basket and, you know. To eat them. Yeah, to eat them. Yeah. Um, there's only, you know, certain ones, but um, I guess catfish, they gross me out. I don't really care to catch catfish but you never know what you're gonna pull up it's the rat of the lake <laughs> they bark mm. okay mm. in case you didn't know catfish bark ew it's it barks like a dog <laughs> like for real yes they make the like a barking noise <laughs> when you catch them well when you're like taking the hook out of their mouth um, and i don't like it <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> um but yes i do so um where i live on the lake is maybe um a quarter mile from like where the water is so um we have a golf, a golf cart that i drive down there to fish off the dock or we have a really nice beach in the addition i live in um which is right by the dock so i at the either at the beach or on the dock or something just when you've been day. on magazines before yes for your Spe- boat. yeah uh, speedboat magazine i've been i think in two um different editions of that magazine plus the calendar for 2016 or s- I think it was 16. I remember but you showing yes. me that. Mm-hmm. Do you race boats yourself? Um, no, I'm a passenger um, in the boats. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> this is my questions. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to spit out this gum. Marcella just <laughs> took gum crazy. out of her mouth, ripped my papers, Wait, all I'm my sorry. preparations. She's not hardcore. popping it like, you know. Oh my a, gosh. Sorry. 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 <laughs> um... <laughs> So yes, so I um, am a passenger in the boats that um, that race that race. So they're DCBs. It's a Dave's Custom Boats or perform- Performance Boating. They're a West Coast company, and um, they. I think the fastest I've been in a boat was 188, 87, 88. Oh, <laughs> Were you nervous? No, I love. I want to go 200. It? I want to go 200 so bad. Like I. But you also had friends pass away last yes. year. Last that was year. a terrible yes. accident. Yes. What happened? Um, the lickety split. They, um, it was just kind of a wrong um, water pattern. 
um, and the way the boat came down in the water and very experienced driver, lots of hours and training, safety training um, for specifically for the performance boats. Um, so it was just kind of a, you know, fluke for kind of a freak accident. And you were but, close with them, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. That's horrible. Yes. How many people but died? Did anyone? Three. Su- did anyone survive that was on the boat? No. They all died. Mm-hmm. Ay, yes. And I, um, I was not out there for that specific um, race, but, um, and they weren't even, uh, weren't even like racing at the time. It was just kind of like a cruise, you know, everybody's kind of cruising together type. Um, they weren't like on the race course or anything like that. And I have seen some um, accidents happen in front of me, like while, like in, while they're racing. So if you're, when you're racing, it's just like one boat at a time from point A to point B. And um, it's, I think, a mile long that they shortened to three quarters of a mile because the speeds were getting um, it, crazy. You wouldn't think like that extra quarter mile, like, you know, would have that so much of an fast. impact of on speed, but it does. And so they had shortened, they have shortened the, um, the length of the racetrack. So how fast you can go in three quarters of a mile, I guess. Have you ever crashed when you've been on? I have not, but there we have what I felt like were, or close my body calls. felt like were close calls, not necessarily work with another boat, but just kind of, um, came out of the water wrong or came down wrong or something. And you still want to go 200. Yes. <laughs> so have, you, have you always been, like, do you like speed like in the car on a, like you like that? Who's listening? <laughs> <laughs> like, do you like going fast? Yes. Motorcycle? Yes. Uh, yes, I, you'll do all of that. Yeah, wow. I've, I've ridden dirt bikes my entire life. Oh my life. gosh, my boyfriend would like love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not really a, the only thing I'm afraid of. Oddly enough, are roller coasters. I will not ride a roller coaster. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> I can see that you're not in control of it at all. Uh, th- no, yeah, spe- but if you're riding, you're not in control either. That's like, fair. That's fair. You know what I mean? And yeah. this, is, this is so. First, on I'm boating, and I've been like I said, I'm the water live grown up on the water my entire life um always wear a life jacket i don't care how familiar you are familiar you are with the water you know like i teach my kids the same thing as being like you know safety first if it's uh, over your knees then you know you have to have a life jacket on pretty much not obviously not all the time but if you're in a boat you have to have your life jacket on um it's just one of those things especially when you're doing or in the perform in the perform performance boats um and this is kind of the reality of it like it's not you know if you crash you know am I going to survive it's you wear the life jacket so they can find your body basically not how to search for it that's the way I I mean that's just the reality that you kind of have to face when you're you know going in those boats 150 miles an hour you know and it feels like you're just driving down the highway at 50 like but the impact if there's an if there's an mm-hmm. accident you are going to be dead. Yes. I mean, just because the impact of when you hit the water is like hitting asphalt, basically. In 150 miles an hour. Yeah. Or even slower than that. I mean, just, you know, like we can accidentally do a belly buster or back buster <laughs> off a diving board. Right. It um, hurts. Yeah. And you're not, I mean, you're just, that's just your body weight. Mm-hmm. So. Wow. And the yes. racing, they get like prizes and. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. And there's like, you know, um, different divisions. D- uh, classifications on the length of the boat, what style of boat it is, and um, do you have so a boat? I do not have a boat. Oh, okay, I'm surprised, but I want one. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one. I've got this little little one picked out that I like, but um, I have a razor, so I ride razors and do all the mudding. Um, I got Polaris razors, so I can go rock climbing and mudding and. You like a tomboy, <laughs> country girl, <laughs> country girl tomboy. I, I can be a city girl too. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. But um, so anyway, that's kind of uh, things I do back home. Yeah. And also play golf in college. So I'm a golfer. Wow. And I don't know. It's very outdoorsy. Yes, Very. I would like rather mow the yard than do the dishes. Okay. <laughs> you oh, so you wow. Look, you look like a Barbie, but yeah. you can ride a dirt bike. <laughs> Got it. Yes. I mean, I'll do laundry all day, but just the dishes, uh, not really my thing. Yeah. <laughs> so no cooking? I love to cook. Oh, you love to cook, yeah, but, but don't do the dishes. Just not clean. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I like to clean as I go, but you know, it doesn't always happen that way, or happen that way when you have kids. And, yeah, right. Like, <laughs> everything. Yeah, right. yeah. exactly. 
So, so that uh, at this moment brings me to our question of today. Which one? I told you. I oh my gosh! <laughs> so really we're starting right a new thing on our okay. podcast where we're doing a question of the day. Oh, Michael, Michelle can't remember. It's all right. He needs more work. Oh, <laughs> okay. I love you say that all. So, do you want to say I have a question? Yes, I have a question. Okay, okay. So, do you follow Christy Brinkley at all? You know, uh, yeah. she is. I know she is. Yeah, yes. is she is. So she is how old? Sixty. 62 and she looks like she's 32 yes. if not and her younger. daughter's beautiful yeah so, awesome. so they're gorgeous and mm-hmm. my mom will always send me pictures of her of how wonderful she looks so and I think she looks beautiful but recently we were reading or you were reading comments where people are super mean about that she still has long hair and she still wears short skirts and that she looks like the Joker, which she does not look like the Joker, <laughs> by the way. She looks perfect. If uh, like, Those are goals yes. for me. And I, I told my mom, I was like, you remind me of her. Um, and I think, I guess the question is, how do you feel about preserving age? Do you feel like she should have long hair? Do you feel like it's okay for her to wear short skirts? Hell yeah. I love it. Like, if you can do it, do it. Like, right? I don't care, like, you know, how old you are. Like, if you can rock, rock it, and if you feel, n- number one, if you feel comfortable in it with yourself, screw everybody else. <laughs> right. That's what I, I mean, that's kind of my philosophy. And I mean, I'm 42, I'll be 43 in August. And everybody just looks at me like, no way. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I guess I have two kids. I, my daughter will be 19 in July. My son just turned five, um, January 30th. So they're like, you have two kids and they're like, how old? I'm right. Like, yes, yeah, they're, you four- look amazing. they're 14 years apart. So I joke and I say, I have two only children. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, I'm like, if, you know, if you feel comfortable, you know, wearing whatever, you know, short skirts when you're 65, 70, 60, well, however old you are. I mean. Right. I feel like if you can look good in them, then by all whatever means, makes like, you she happy. looks so amazing to me. Yes. And it's so unbelievable when you read the read, uh, comments. There's maybe two or three where mm-hmm. people go, oh, my gosh, she looks amazing. Stop, you guys. Why are you so mean? And the rest is all give it up already and yeah, no, I will like never give up person. I will never give up trying to look my best like yeah, I, that's ever right there is why I think the question of the day is so mm-hmm. great why would you want to give it up like why right. why I mean you've like, lived life first of yeah. all for so long I give you you know blessed to get to 60 70 mm-hmm. 80 but why do you have to let yourself go like I don't understand I I even said J Lo on the yeah. Grammys yeah. dances her ass off, and I'm like that yes. just always. Proves she's to 49, me. right? Yeah, I she'll be 50. Yeah. Yes, and it proves to me that like it doesn't matter how old you are, age is just a number, and to look good, you feel good. Yes, I was watching Real Housewives of New Jersey, and one of the moms, the daughter, is giving her mom a makeover, and mm-hmm. she has gray hair. She says in her interview, she goes, "I don't know why my mom wants to walk around like that. Like, why would you want to walk around with gray hair?" And so they sit her down. I, this was just on the finale. And they do her hair blonde. And they did makeup on her. And they did a side-by-side. And you guys, the difference. I was like, why would you want to look like why? that? Right. Why? Like, put makeup on still. And I remember one time with you, mm-hmm. we were out. It was the last time we were with Keith somewhere. And we were out. And I remember you telling my mom, I overheard the conversation. You were like, if you're going to put lip gloss on when you're in a relationship, you put lip gloss on all the time. Like you, <laughs> you always have to keep yes. looking your best. Like don't let yourself go. Like, I, and come, yeah, just like coming back to the relationship thing and like, you know, age and aging. Like I always want to like, when my boyfriend or husband, you know, whoever gets home, like I want to, if he's out yeah. working, like I, I want to look good for him when he gets home. Right. I mean, I think that every woman or should, I mean, we're not going to be, be be on the top of our game every day, but like, <laughs> no. you know, brush your teeth, brush. I mean, like, <laughs> but shower. it's also so crazy to but me no. because everyone goes through it. Everyone is going to get old. Everyone mm-hmm. has those steps in front of them. So why not be all for that? These women are actually starting a new way of Freaking like yes. look, look at Cher. Mm-hmm. She's seventy two. Oh my god, she looks yes. awesome. Then I'm going to go someone else. I mean, she she doesn't look that way, but the Queen of England. She is 92 years yes. old. She looks exactly the same. She has <laughs> like always looked like, the whole I know, life I think so. <laughs> working. I mean, I'm like, whoa, this is insane. I'm going to be like the crazy cat lady down the street. Oh, yeah, I, don't care. Okay. <laughs> I do not want to look old. Or, like I don't. The, the fishing lady like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. So I guess that it, like, that is the question. Is that, you know, I mean, I think you should always just embrace yourself. Ex- I, mean, I mean, yeah, I feel like we're always growing. We're always learning. Who was it? We're 
Oh, Diana you, Ross. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's who I just thought about. Grammy. Sorry mm-hmm. didn't no, you're to fine. interrupt you, but Diana Ross, 70th birthday, looks amazing, mm-hmm. performing, beautiful. I'm like, yeah. come on, people. Well, don't I said it's me. probably like ugly people behind there, hiding behind the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Those people that are jealous and don't want to put the work in. Well, that's like, what I mean. The, and I, my favorite quote is, there's no such thing as an ugly woman, just lazy one. So there if you, you don't go. try, you know, mm-hmm. you can't be mad at somebody else. I mean, like, you know, I guess. People will say, oh, my gosh, you're so you're so thin. And blah. I'm like, well, I'm not sitting on the couch all day either. I'm like, I, I mean, I'm active. I'm outdoors. I'm chasing my son, trying to keep up with my daughter, you know, just right. Putting the work. Yes. In. And I for just me personally, I like to accomplish even if it's something small, you know, that every day, like I, even if it's that, I mean, as even as small as like getting the all the laundry put up or, you know, making sure I walked you know, a mile or two or so, or something, something. Um, the most important thing, I'm not sitting on the couch yeah. all day. <laughs> yes. Right. The most yeah. important thing. Yeah. Because then I feel bad. Like I, I go outside at say four. I mean, it's, it's dark. It's still getting dark early, which I don't really care for. But, it's going to change soon. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you know, you stay inside all day and then you finally get up, you know, step outside, say four, four thirty. And you're like, man, it's like a really nice. I wish I would have been out here. You mm-hmm. know, I think it just does something for the your soul um just the fresh air and the sunshine and right. just we all you know, need that than, well, i think when you yeah. get i mean i have yes. days that i look like a disaster but i think <laughs> most days that when you can feel good about yourself yes. or wear something nice or oh no it makes you feel good right, right. Mm-hmm. i don't know and i mean i have friends that say well you know my, like, my mom doesn't always approve of the things that i choose to wear but she grew up in a different time than i did <laughs> <laughs> right um but um, like if I feel comfortable and in it, short skirt, whatever, um, I'm gonna wear it. I mean, if and if people don't like it, you don't have to look at me. Right, That's what exactly, I say, exactly. Know? Amen. And on that note, yeah. if you have yes. opinions on that, yes, let us yes. know. Please write listeners. to us. Yeah. Tell us. Comments, I want to know too. Yeah. Comment on our YouTube channel, whatever. Yeah, let us know we what would you love think. to hear it, mm-hmm. and then we might address it again yeah. and see what you came up with. Yeah. <laughs> On yes. that note, I'm going to end the first show and yes. we're going to come back with Jana and hear all about her career and the path that she does with her work. Yes. And thank you for listening. Yes.